Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to 1980s things that kids no longer do. I've reacted to, I think it was like 1990s things that kids used to do or 1970s. I've done these sorts of videos before, but um, I've seen that I haven't like, reacted to this yet. And I have done like similar ones and I thought they were quite fascinating to see how, I guess, society has changed. How kids sort of growing up, how they used to get up to different things and how obviously now it's a completely different world. Or when I grew up. It was not the same, but it was a different aspect and a different way to how it is current day. And it just it's constantly changing, right? Like kids in these times, I feel like would have had a lot more freedom, which there are a lot more positives to. But there are also, I guess, some negatives, which I guess you could say maybe they're more at risk at getting in trouble with. I mean, I guess getting in trouble with a stranger, you know, stuff like that. But we're going to see um, the sort of things that kids and i guess some of you got up to when you were growing up and that's pretty much it let's check this out it's hard to believe but the 1980s ended more than 30 years ago and the world has changed a lot since that time things that were once considered normal wow. this is a real picture i mean he is definitely doing bits it's just wild to see a kid that looks no more than five doing a wheelie on something like this wow i mean he probably grew up to be some madman in the most positive way but that is wild are now old-fashioned or taboo in this video we will have a look back <laughs> at some of the 1980s things that kids oh, no longer do what the hell is going on here kids today may still have art class but the projects they do are a bit different there used to be an emphasis on crafting items that served a purpose, and nothing did that more than a good old-fashioned <laughs> ashtray. Damn. It wasn't meant for the students, but rather their parents or grandparents that smoked. Gifting them an ashtray was the perfect way to show how much you love them. <laughs> love that. Long before we had inkjet and laser printers, we had an incredibly noisy dot matrix printer. These bad boys used a special kind of paper that we don't see anymore. It had holes that were punched on the sides which allowed the printer to grasp the paper and then guide it through. Once your printing job was finished, you had to tear each sheet of paper apart along the perforated ends. Not only that, but the sides with the holes had to be removed as well. Oh. It definitely wasn't a quick process, but at the time we sure thought it was. I wonder how many people ripped accidentally ripped the paper when just ripping these bits off obviously i assume it's like a little cut what like where like it makes it easier to rip it off because it's i guess just like i don't know what they call it but it's like basically you just it's a pattern there that helps it rip off easier but even then i assume sometimes it would probably still rip through very occasionally but i mean who actually knows saturday mornings were a special time for a kid in the 80s they got up early just to sit in front of the television with a big old bowl of sugary cereal and then catch up on some cartoons until about lunchtime, unless your mom kicked you out of the house first. This was a routine that could be seen in practically every- Mr. T was in magazines. What? Oh, well, not magazines. Um, yeah, mag he was like a cartoon. Mr. T was a cartoon character. What the hell? Kicked you out of the house first. This that. was a routine that could be seen in practically every household that had children. Cereal in the 80s was pretty awesome, and there were a lot I of see. different kinds available. Kids' cereals were packed with sugar, and parents really didn't care. They the, good just times. the good times, man. I mean, I grew up on sugary cereal, and that's pretty much what kept me going. I wanted kids to <laughs> sit down and shut up, but that was pretty well impossible with a huge sugar rush. Cereal boxes were a lot of fun, with all the artwork, puzzles, stories, and games on them. They also had some pretty incredible prizes inside, and if you had a sibling, then it could be a real challenge to get to them first. Wireless phones are certainly the norm today, but there was a time when phones were connected to a base with a cord. These cords were coiled, stretchy, and the perfect fidget item while you were on the phone. Did you ever wrap the cord around your finger? Or perhaps you even wrapped yourself up like a mummy. <laughs> Phone cords may have been fun, but having someone listening into your conversation wasn't. Most households had one phone line, but at least two phones in the house. 
wow so if you put the other phone say someone's using it someone else could listen i've never had a house phone so i don't know and some people still have house phones which i find fascinating but i mean at the end of the day i guess maybe if something that you've always had then there's no reason to get rid of it but you can listen through with another phone that is that's a bit cheeky it's connected to it if you were very careful about it, you could totally pick up the other phone and hear some juicy conversations. These are just some of the things that we did before the age of cell phones. Damn. Playgrounds today have gotten soft. <laughs> Even the ground surrounding them is often cushioned. Let's see what they used to be like, come on. The playground equipment itself is made of plastic and it has a little give to it. But the playgrounds of the 80s... Oh, Jesus, man. This is... <laughs> Look how big this slide is. They were made of metal. This solid steel got hot in the summer and could deliver third-degree burns. They had sharp edges that could slice, and they could definitely break some bones if you fell on them. The equipment was hard, and so was the ground. Each and every playground had its own element of danger. To be fair, in the UK, unless you're talking about kids' parks, like kids' parks for like toddlers and like kids, I'd say kids under six or seven, maybe even a bit younger, they are like, I guess, made out of plastic. But then when you've got like parks for kids that are a bit older, I mean, the park that I used to go to, the, the slide was metal. All the slides that I sort of remember are metal. So I think that's still a thing. But I guess just for the young, young kids, then maybe they've changed it and made it a bit safer, which is fair enough. I mean, I kind of understand that. Today, computers are a necessary item in every household. Many kids start using one in some form or fashion long before they enter kindergarten. The fact is, computers have become a required item for most schools. But in the 80s, you were lucky if there was even one computer in the house. This wasn't something that people were on all the time, and people had little idea how to use the DOS-based operating system. As time progressed, so did the computer, and we were able to learn a little bit more slowly than what kids do today. Safety standards in the 80s were a little different, and especially so when you compare it to the earlier part of the seat decade. Belts. By yeah. the mid-80s, mandatory seatbelt wearing laws were just beginning to get passed. Prior to that time, kids rode in the bed of pickup trucks and crammed into the far back part of station wagons. Bouncing and sliding around was just part of the fun. It was like your very own mosh pit, and there really was a science to try and keep from getting hurt. Jesus. Once those seatbelt laws were put into place, many adults found themselves in an interesting predicament. What if they had more kids than seatbelts? No problem. <laughs> How many? Just was that like seven, eight kids in that car? Jeez. Buckle two or three kids in one spot with one seatbelt. <laughs> They'll make it all right. <laughs> wow. Kids in the 80s loved playing outside, which worked out great because parents didn't even want them in the house. When Saturday morning cartoons were over, kids were expected to get lost. Go outside. Go anywhere. Just don't stay in here. That's pretty much what every parent said. Kids played outside with no parental supervision, and that was perfectly fine. They were free to wander miles from home, and parents had no idea where they were. But there was one rule. Be home before the streetlights came on. School playgrounds weren't the only thing that was unforgiving. Oh my days, this is not a playground, is it? This, <laughs> this looks a bit sketchy. I mean, what's being held together by some rocks? Okay. Some of the activities that kids did in PE class were also pretty rough. Remember playing dodgeball? Ah, oh, dodgeball, man. I mean, I remember playing this and like, you throw it too hard at the girls and you get in trouble, man. Everyone had to participate because it was part of your grade. Dodgeballs have a distinctive smell and who could ever forget the sound as it bounced off of someone? Today, many schools no longer allow this game to be played, and wall ball is enough. See, we still play this in my school, but I think by the time we had left, just around that time, I think I don't even know if they stopped playing, but I think I heard stuff about how it was stopped, like they were stopping it and stuff. Because I mean, some people didn't want to play it. I used to love playing dodgeball. It was so fun. I mean, I can't even throw that well. It's just a fun game to play. Another one that could be pretty tough. Apple watches were nowhere to be seen in the 80s. 
kids were just happy to have a simple digital watch from Casio or Timex. Of course, if it was a calculator watch, then... Bro, calculator watches, they are so... <laughs> they must have been so cool back in the day, but now it's just like... It's just like such a wild thing to even consider wearing. But again, in these times, they must have been really useful. You were super cool. It was sort of a rebellious thing to have because a lot Damn. of teachers said that we would never have a calculator everywhere we went. Boy, were they ever wrong. Look at us today with cell phones. It's a flex. Remember the GoBots watch? It had the appearance of a normal <sighs> digital watch, but it could transform into a... I was literally going to guess that it looks like a transformer, and there we go. But how the hell is this a wristwatch? What am I seeing? A robot. Those were pretty popular until the Swatch watches came on the market. Swatch watch. They came in every color and design imaginable, and to be super cool, you needed one with a faceplate or rubber bands on them. <laughs> chalk in school was the norm, and every classroom had their very own chalkboard, which was messy but fun. No matter what class it was, there was always that one kid who wanted to run his fingernails across the chalkboard and make everyone cringe. Ah, oh, I don't like that. It's literally making me cringe just thinking of it, man. I cringe before I even mentioned it. That is not a nice thought. For some reason or another, they are no longer in schools. Some say it was because of computers, while others say it was due to health issues like asthma. But one thing that every kid enjoyed was going outside to bang the erasers and knock the chalk out. It was a great way to get out of class, and most kids can no longer do that. Waterbeds started coming on strong. I've always heard of waterbeds, and people used to always say they're so comfy, but I've never actually seen one. So this is a waterbed. I guess this is an old school waterbed, right? But I've always thought, like, because obviously it's full of water. You stab it, I mean, I assume they're quite thick, but surely, like, the damage that it's going to cause if it bursts is just not worth it. Plus, how do you move it? I don't understand them. In the 70s and by the 80s, they were in many households. If you didn't have one, then you probably knew someone who did. It was sort of a bizarre feeling to be floating on water while you slept, but at the same time, it was really relaxing. Today, almost no one has them, so many kids have no idea what they're missing. I guess they keep you quite cool, which is actually probably like for summer specifically, it must be quite nice because they're definitely going to feel colder. Out on. Peanut butter in the 80s was huge. We had peanut butter candy, cookies, crackers, and of course we brought peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to school. Now many schools will no longer allow peanut butter True. items to be brought to school thanks to allergies. God, I do feel bad because some people have such bad, like, that, like, the allergies are literally life or death for them. And obviously, it's, I love peanut butter, but the fact that you can be so allergic to something that's such a, like, a common, like, filling and people just, like, most people like peanut butter, right? Or I'd say a good 60% of people like peanut butter. So it's just like, you know what, this is one of those ones where... It's just so brutal because it's one of the most common things and you just if you're like if you've got severe allergies or just allergies in general to this sort of stuff just feel for you honestly most kids in the 80s had never heard of this type of allergy but if you had it then it must have been a scary time period to live through bicycles in the 80s were everything to a kid bmx bikes were the most popular and kids were always riding them or jumping some pretty gnarly ramps they gave kids a sense of freedom that they couldn't get anywhere else. There were countless adventures just waiting to happen on the seat of a bicycle. They were also a great indicator to see where all the kids in the neighborhood were. The yard with the bikes was where everyone was. In the 80s, kids were busy enjoying life. They went out roller skating, bowling, to the mall, and so much more. Since 80s kids did not have cell phones, the payphone was something that they all had to master. If kids did not have a quarter, they would then call Home Collect to let their parents know when they were ready. If you're lucky, you may still see a payphone here and there, but does it work? Probably not, and it's <laughs> unlikely that any kid today has ever used one. I've not used one. Valentine's- Obviously payphones, I don't think they're really a UK thing. We have phone boxes. And I've never used a phone box, which is, I guess, oh, just our version of that. But 
Yep, never used one. Day for a kid in the 80s at school was completely different. If kids are even allowed to participate in handing out cards, then they usually have to bring enough for the whole class. Back then, you could choose who you wanted to give one to, and it was more of a social contest to see who received the most. Damn. For those kids growing up today, this may all seem like a foreign universe, but it really was a beautiful time. 80s kids had more freedom to experience the world around them firsthand. The 1980s really was the last decade where people weren't buried in computer screens. Well, there we go. Um, if you're an 80s, you're an 80s kid, let me know how nostalgic this feels for you. The eight, in 1980, those were the best years of life. I wish I can go back in time and redo it all over again. Growing up in the 70s and 80s was great. Life was simpler. For, yeah, the fact that it was just so much more simple. It must have been a lot, lot more like stress free. Again, maybe like there's other ways that it was a lot worse. Like I don't know, like just kids that maybe like dealt with anxiety issues and stuff. Say you're a kid that doesn't want to play volleyball and you're forced to play because nowadays you're no, not sorry. Then you're gonna be forced to play, and I wouldn't mind. But people obviously some some kids wouldn't have really wanted to. Nowadays, like you said, it's been banned, or maybe it's allowed but you have the choice whether you want to play it or not nowadays so there's aspects that i can see positives for kids back then and then positives for kids back now but it does sort of show how i guess how um i guess strict it's got in terms of just rules for certain things for like people growing up now like i was a kid that used to go to the park i would stay out till late until dark walk home on my own and do it every especially in the summer i would do it every night and you gotta think like, in summer it got darker like 10 o'clock so i was i was out until late maybe when i was getting a bit older like 14 and stuff i was staying out till that late but they were the best times in my life honestly i i used to love doing that sort of stuff but um just causing mischief and stuff <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't always the best stuff that we were getting up to but it was fun so that's all that matters but um there we go hopefully you enjoyed let me know if this reminded you of the good times or if it's the area you grew up in or maybe a different area and you preferred that era or whatever it is. But yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.